Hello everyone, it's Ella here. I um just wanted to share with you some uh, interesting stuff I found. Fort Julian, also known as the Fort of Quiet B. Sorry if I say it wrong. Is a fort located on the left or the west bank of the Nile, about five kilometers west of Rashid. On the north coast of Egypt, it was originally built by the Ottoman Empire and occupied by the French during Napoleon Bonaparte's campaign in Egypt and Syria between 1798 and 1801. The fort became famous as a place where the Rosetta Stone was found in 1799. The fort is a low, squat, rectangular structure with a central blockhouse that overlooks the final few kilometres of the Nile before it joins the Mediterranean Sea. It was built around 1417 by this guy, um, Sultan Quite Bay, um, who also built the eponymous citadel of Quetta Bay in Alexandria in 1576. The Sultan reinforced it with defensive walls. The sub fort subsequently fell into disrepair. The fort was built in part from stone looted. It was subsequently fell into disrepair. It was built in part from stone located from nearby ancient Egyptian sites where this guy visited it in 1799. He noted that it was constructed of parts of old buildings and that several of the stone of the Embroideries with fine free stone of Upper Egypt that's still covered with hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics. The discovery of the Rosetta Stone, the French took possession of the dilapidated fort on the 9th of July, 19th of July, 1799, only a few days before the Battle of Aqaba and embarked on hasty rebuilding. It was subsequently reconstructed in a more thoroughgoing fashion. It was renamed Fort Julian after Thomas Prosper Julian, one of Napoleon's aides de camp. Lieutenant Pierre Francis Bouchard uncovered a f the famous zone at the fort while repairing its defences. Quote, Bay's engineers had apparently brought it to the site from elsewhere, possibly at Tampa at nearby Sais, to use as fill. Two years later, the fort was captured by a combined British and Turkish force after a short siege and bombardment. The fort was extensively restored by the Egyptian government in the 1980s and reopened in 1985 by President. This guy, I don't want to offend people, so I won't say it. It is now surrounded by three sides of the village here and is open to the public and it's possible to reach from taxi. So this is the fort here. Fort Julian of the Egyptian boat. Published March 1, 1803 by R. Phillips, number 71 St. Paul's Churchyard. It doesn't look anywhere as near as what it is now. The Saladian Citadel of Cairo is a fortification of Cairo, Egypt. Location is a part of the Madaban Hill near the centre, famous for its fresh breeze, grand views. Hey, look at these. I think they were like an aerial of some sort, communication aerial, or an olden day mobile tone, phone, telephone, pole sort of thing. There's no way it's just a lightning rod or a flagpole. Okay, so that Fort Julian.
That is amazing. And this goes back to one of the seven wonders of the old world. This site. Absolutely beautiful in its design. I just wanted to ask if anyone knows what this one is. I can't find anything about it. It's a lighthouse. Does anyone know? Please let me know in the comments, please. Thank you. The one here, is this a lighthouse to direct ships or is it a Martello, Martello Tower? This is the other one. There's supposed to be a tower there, but I don't really want to like it. So, um, yeah, is that a uh, Martello Tower or a lighthouse? Not sure. One here. I'm not sure if it's a, a private property or an old port. I'm not sure, but the whole place looks like it's been hit by a massive, just wiped out everything. That's what it looks like. Massive wave has just come in. And these are some forts I have come here before, but these are so interesting in how they're placed. I think the whole area might have had a few within it. There's another and then there's another one. I'll bring some information up for you but it looks quite big. Probably had a the one that went down here as well. So this is on the other video I did these ones, just showing you quickly uh, for the ones that probably skipped through and didn't watch. Really appreciate it if you do the distraction from the craziness of the world right now. Wouldn't hurt. And this is that place I was showing on the other video. So down here is the one of the seven wonders of the old world. Seven wonders of the ancient one. So this is where they had uh, one of the statues and um, they knocked it down. Beautiful building. So this, so this was where the lighthouse of the old Alexandria used to sit. It crumbled in the earthquake in I think it was thirteen oh nine, and they rebuilt this from the ruins of the earthquake. There's a gun turret there, a gun turret there, there. Nope. This one here I was looking at, the date went back but I can't make it back now. It seems to go deep, it has a, like a moat around it so it could have been a fort at some stage. Intricately designed, beautiful a tower there. Every time I try to click on street view, it just doesn't work. So I don't think they have street view in this area. Oops. So we've got another lighthouse. It's a magnificent, big, beautiful lighthouse, white and black. All the way up. I think they actually ran on mercury as well, that they didn't run on paraffin lamps. I don't believe the mercury. I see like a possibility of gun turrets as well building to go in the fort.
must be where they and here's two more old star forts that are in the other video that I mentioned as well I played with the dates to go back and the latest photo is this one is covered Let's see if we can do it again okay so go to 2019 and it'll be covered up oh, it's almost covered up this one's completely fully dug out I must set a drawbridge there full on moat but this one is just almost completely filled in so let's go back oh huh. obviously when they do that it's something they don't want you to see okay so here we go is this when they started to dig it out was when it when they had that cover on that they found it and they started digging it out because it looks like this bit had started to dig out but it doesn't seem that they got any fur so it's just amazing that sitting there under the sand so this was just one of the seven of the ancient world the lighthouse of Alexandria a fort beautifully designed So yeah, obviously there was something over here that they were digging up and here I didn't want people to see Great earthquake, there we go, the 33 number again So let's see what they've got to say The Lighthouse of Alexandria, sometimes called the Pharos of Alexandria was a lighthouse built by the Median Kingdom during the reign of Ptolemy to Philadelphia, Philadelphia 280 to 247 BC, which has been estimated to be at least 100 meters or 330 feet, 33 the number again, and all height. One of the seven wonders of the ancient world for many centuries, it was one of the tallest man made structures in the world. The lighthouse was severely damaged by three earthquakes, there's that three number again, the 293 Epic and Rome. It was the third longest surviving ancient wonder, Mausoleum Crest, and this giant pyramid. Giza surviving part until 1460 when the last of its rest fell off on the site. So that's on. I think we just look for just some remains of the lighthouse of Alexandria's Eastern Harbour. In 2016, Ministry of State Antiquities in Egypt had plans to merge ruins of the Central Museum. So that the, the base and then it got higher. <clears throat> so. It was on a small island located on the western edge of the Nile Delta in 332 Alexander the Great founded the Sin Isthmus opposite Pharos. Alexandria and Pharos were later connected by a mole spanning more than 1,200 meters, 0.75 miles, which caused the Heptos station. It's like a giant causeway often to reserve to as a mole or a dike built by people of Alexandria, Egypt in the 3rd century. The stadium was a Greek unit of length, measuring approximately 180 metres. The east side of the mole became the Great Harbour, now an open bay. The west side lay the port of Eurus, with its inner basin. Kribitos, now vastly enlarged to form modern harbour. Today's city development laying between the present Grand Square and the modern Rast Quarter is built on the, the silt which gradually widened and obliterated this mole. Um, So it was constructed in the 3rd century after Alexander the Great died and the first Ptolemy announced himself king in 305 BC and commissioned, commissioned its construction thereafter. The building, building was finished during the reign of his son. It took 12 years to complete it, a total cost of 800 talents of silver. 
The light was produced by a furnace at the top and the tower was said to have been built mostly with solid blocks of limestone, although since the lighthouse was over 300 feet tall, the use of limestone as the main material was doubtful due to the possibility collapsing under its own weight. Rather, pink granite found nearby is more probable, much stronger, and it can withstand more weight. Strabo reported that Stratocrus had a dedication to the saviour gods inscripted in metal letters in the lighthouse. Later, Pinini Delta wrote that Stratocrus was the architect, which is disputed in the century AD. Lucian wrote that Stratocrus came under plaster bearing the name Plotomy stone, but when the plaster fell off, Stratus's name would be visible in the stone. Um, blocks of sandstone and limestone used in the construction, analyzed to be from the Wadi Hammock quarries in the desert east of the sea. So its height. This uh, undergoing several repairs after the earthquake damage, given heights vary only 15% from 103 to 180 metres, 338 to 387 foot, on by 30 by 30 metres, a 98 by 98 foot square base. The fullest description of the lighthouse comes from Arab traveller who visited Alexandria in 1166 CE. He provided the description of material angular shaft. The inner ramp was described as roofed with masonry and a seven shibia, 189 centimetre, 6.2 foot, noted as to allow two horsemen to pass at once. In clockwise rotation, the ramp held four storeys, having 18, 14 and 17 rooms on each second, third, fourth floors, respectively. He held the account of the base of the lighthouse to be 45 BA, 30 metres, 100 foot long on each side with connecting ramps of 600 dara, 300 metres, 984 foot long, by 20 dara, 10 metres, 32 foot wide. Continuing the octagonal section is accounted at 24 BA, which is 16.4 metres, 54 feet, in a width with a diameter of central section, 12.73 BA, 8.7 metres, 28.5 feet. The apex of the lighthouse Otanu was measured with a diameter of 6.4 BA, 4.3 metres, or 20.9 feet. He indicates that the lighthouse was constructed from large blocks of light coloured stone. The tower was made up of three tapering tiers, a lower section with a central core, a middle octagon section, and at the top a circular section. At its apex was positioned a mirror which reflected sunlight during the day and a fire was lit at night. Extent Roman coins struck by the Alexandria mint shown a statue of Triton was positioned on each of the building's four corners and a statue of Poseidon and or Zeus stood at the top. accounts of the lighthouse after the destruction in the 1303 earthquake. A Moroccan scholar and explorer at Plaster Alexandria in 1326 and 1349, he noted the wreck condition of the lighthouse was then only noticeable by a rectangular tower and entrance ramp. He accounted measurements each side of the tower to be 140 shuba on either side. He detailed plans of Sultan this guy to build a new lighthouse near the site of the collapsed one, but the plans were never fulfilled after the Sultan's death. So it was cracked and destroyed during earthquakes. They were looking for treasures and they damaged the base of it. Since 1978, a number of proposals have been made to replace the lighthouse with modern construction. Plans been opposed. A well-preserved ancient tomb in the town of Asker, 48 kilometres southwest of Alexandria, is thought to be a scaled-down model of the Alexandria Pharos, known colloquially under various names. The design of marionettes in many 
Egyptian Islamic mosques followed the three-stage design similar to that of the pharaohs, attesting to the building's broad architectural influence. Julius Caesar, in his Civil Wars, Part 3, 11 to 112, describes the pharaohs and its strategic importance, gaining control of the lighthouse, helped him subdue Ptolemy's armies. Now, because of the narrowness of the strait, there can be no access by ship to the harbour without consent of those who hold the pharaohs. In view of this, Caesar took the precaution of landing his troops while the enemy was preoccupied with fighting, seized the pharaohs and poised a garrison there. The result was that a safe access was secured for his corn supplies and reinforcements. So this is the tomb in which was some the flag of Alexandria government. So yeah, there's supposed to be a statue of Poison or Zeus on top of it. That's it in the water. I suppose that's Zeus and Poison and the angels. It look beautiful on its day. So thank you everyone if you're still here. Appreciate it. Just a bit of a distraction from all the craziness that's going on at the moment. So hit that like button and I'll continue this Seven Wonders of the World and some more starport research and have a look into the uh, Knights Templar using the tunnels of these forts to move around. Thank you. Bye.